Hello me again. Today we're going to uh, do some painting. As you can see I've made a little bit of progress on the mountain. I've done a few different experimental uh, coatings with paint. Doing something a little different than I've done in previous mountains where you see it's a more of a, a real gray look. Um, just mixing acrylic paints myself. Um, what I've done this time is I've gone out and I've bought some of the Woodland Scenics colors. And I'm trying a technique of dabbing on multi colors and having them all run together and then having it uh, coat the mountain to give it uh, a look that has some depth and a more realistic coloration to, uh, to the mountain itself. So what I thought I would do today is just show you what I've been doing uh, as part of this technique. And as you can see, I left off in this section over here. And uh, you can see some other colors that are poking through because I've already laid some on. So what I've done is I've gotten myself three colors to use. I've got um, yellow ochre, I've got the raw umber, and the stone gray from Woodland Scenics. And mixing them with a little bit of water, um, the yellow ochre and the raw umber, not with as much water, uh, to make sure that the color is there and vibrant and it stays on. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab those colors on one at a time. So the first... Uh, uh, application will be just here and there we'll use the yellow ochre to to uh, dot some spots on the existing mountain face I've already covered over my tracks with um, with tape as you can see to protect it what I'm doing is I'm just applying this in spots and letting it run the fact that it will run is fine because you're gonna get some of, um, of the uh, of the color all over your facing that's where you need it so that it, it dots here and there and blends in with the uh, with the mountain veins and the crags of what we've already created with the uh, with the plaster. So once you've done some of that, then you go back and apply the next color. So I'll get the raw umber here as my second accent color. I'm gonna come here and I'm going to start applying that as well, just here and there, dotting it all over. It's not something you want to get coated everywhere because you don't want that color to dominate and be all over the place. You need to have it in more of a, a spotty look accenting here and there and what that's going to do is when I start to now apply the stone gray and I think I've put enough of this on here when I start to apply the stone gray I'm going to put that over the whole thing and so what you're going to hopefully see is some of this color blending together and and still peek out here and there from the stone gray paint that I'm going to apply right now. So the stone gray, you want to apply that over the whole thing and let that run. And see, when you just spot it through, and you're still going to see some color because this is the wash technique, right? Now in the past, I know guys when I've done my mountains, I've said that I've uh, used a spray bottle and I've actually just sprayed the paint on. With this technique, trying something different because I want to see some some dimension. I want to see some depth in the color, and uh, based on you know the videos I've watched off the internet, YouTube, etc., this technique seems to have the best result. It definitely works for rock castings, but this is I'm trying. I'm attempting to do it now over a wider area uh, with the uh, with the plaster mountain. But you see right away there, it does have a, 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 a I think a better look when you compare over there to the spray. Uh, gray acrylic paint that was used. I mean, it looks, I, I like it, it looks fine. It's just that it has a little bit of a flatter look. This one here on this side is giving me a little bit more depth, and and, uh, and I like the color. The Woodland Scenic shades, the tints that they have in their paint are just fantastic. And it's, you know, I've been mixing paint for a while now trying to uh, work on the mountains on this train, and I have never been able to create grays um, in the same uh, shades, uh, same gradations as what Woodland Scenics has. So th they are a good product. Definitely cost you a little bit more than when you use, uh, you know, acrylic paint that you can pick up at any dollar or craft store for for a song. But um, but the color pays off. I mean, it really shows a difference. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, keep uh, doing the rest of this area that you see that's still white, using the same technique. And then after you're finished that, the uh, the, the last stage that you have to do is um, is get yourself some some black paint and it can be either the Woodland Scenics black or if you're keeping stick to the to the product line or get your own uh, acrylic paint mix it up and uh, I like to use a spray bottle and what this is is this is black paint mixed with a whole lot of water and uh, and what you're gonna do is um, once you've gotten the whole mountain covered and you've got it to the shade that you like 
Then you're going to spray it with the black and let the water um, with tinted with that black uh, drain all over the mountain facing and get into all the cracks and crevices. And it will give it the shading that you want and it will pop. The paint will really pop out. And then once that's all done and finished, then we'll take a look at it after the fact. And, and we might still go back and do what's called dry brushing and do some white flecks. And if you see this mountain, for example, that I made, you'll see here and there some white tipping that's done on, on parts of rock that stick out. And, and that is just to give it that, that further pop, that little bit of um, lighting, uh, and it uh, gives it that more realistic look. And uh, so what we'll see, we'll do, we'll try the same thing over there and we'll see how that works out. Um, but uh, still lots of pain to go. I'm not entirely happy with the color at the moment, so we will be doing some more layering. And that's the secret with this method is keep it thin and apply over and over again and build up the coats because I think you'll get a better look. Uh, it'll look more like real rock uh, and, and the color will drain into all the little crevices and, and little nicks on the rock. And uh, I think you, you know, in, in the end you'll be pleased. And then once we get this done, then we'll start working on the other areas. And you see I already just for a test, I used, used some of the Earth Scenics ground coat. And my thought process is, because I like the color, I think it's a great um, ground color to start with that can really give you a, a, a jump to doing your application of, of grass and uh, bushes and trees, etc. It just has a nice undercoating look to it. But I still have these rock castings that have to be painted. And I'll be using the same technique as what I've already demonstrated for the mountain, uh, this leopard spotting technique, and, and uh, hopefully get a nice effect on the rocks. Okay, so with that, I will continue and uh, give you an update a little bit further on on uh, how the mountain's coming together. Talk to you later.